Hey guys, today we're going to do a pretty simple tutorial about video textures in OSC. If you're unfamiliar, OSC stands for Open Sound Control and allows for other applications on our computer, um, such as Macs, to control blueprints. It also allows for other devices like our phone to control blueprints. So we're going to be using this today to play with our video textures. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm in Engine 421. I'm making just a new blueprint project, no starter content. Um, we'll call this Videos and OSC. Oh, I already, just one video, video and OSC, great. So I'm gonna make this new project. And the first thing we wanna do is we're going to bring a video into Unreal and convert this into a material, which we then can use on walls, floors, cubes, spheres, whatever. So I'm gonna create a new folder and in Unreal, we call folders that have MP4, other, video files, movies. And then I'm going to look at my videos. I have this cute dog one, I'll bring that in. And then I'm going to create a media player. And I wanna check off this video output media texture asset. So this player will create a texture asset that we can then convert to a material which will go into our scene. So I'll call this media player, spelled correctly. And I have this texture, nothing's there. So if I go into my media player, select my video, now I have my video. We have play on open checked off. So I'm gonna uncheck this because I wanna be able to control when it starts programmatically. So I want the default to be off. So I'm gonna save that. I now have a texture of my puppy video, which I'm going to create into a material. Wonderful. Okay, great. And now I want to have some video walls. And if you want to have multiple instances of the same thing, an actor blueprint is a great way to handle that. So I'm going to make a new folder called blueprints. And I'm going to make an actor blueprint. So the first thing that I'm going to need for a video wall is a wall. So I'm going to add a plane. And since that is on the ground, it is a floor and I need a wall. So I'm going to just rotate that and get it up a little. Now this is a pretty tiny wall. So I'm going to scale this a lot. Move that up again. Okay, so I got a big old video wall. I also need a, and before I actually add the second component, our material, I wanna put that puppy video. So I'm going to add our new material. Great. I'm also going to add a media sound component and assign this to our media player. If you don't have sound on your video or don't want sound, you obviously do not need this part, but if you want sound, this is how we're gonna handle that. And finally, we're going to make a new variable called media player. And for type, we can actually search and find the media player. Great. And I need to set the default value to our media player, but I have to compile first. And now I can set it to the media player. So in my event graph, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna open the source. I wanna open the particular video. And so if I look for open source, there we go. And I'll have this happen right away. And I'm gonna select, so if we had multiple files, we could choose different files. I will select this one. And I also want this to play. And maybe I'll just have it wait. So we can use the delay here, actually from here. And our delay just takes this flow and it sticks a delay in it. So I'll have it wait three seconds. 
So I'm gonna open the scene. I'm gonna open that puppies video. I'm gonna wait three seconds and then I'm going to have this start. And of course I need to bring the video wall into the space to see it. Now it looks transparent on this side, but if we come over here, we can see our video wall, our very tall video wall. And I'm gonna bring one more over and let's rotate that. Wonderful. And just get it lined up in the corner because that seems like a nice idea. Okay, great. I have this funny little video wall. I'm gonna spin around my player start so when I start the scene, I am looking right at my beautiful video corner wall thing. And we're gonna hit save. And if we play, well, it's still too close. We have our videos. And after three seconds, the videos start and I have this very comic video wall. Now, if I want to handle this programmatically, we could do key presses, but that's not always the best way to handle something. So I'm going to use a max patch. So this is max if you're unfamiliar with it. And we're going to send OSC um, messages through max. So if I hit N, I can say UDP send. And I need to give it a host, which is your IP address, and a port. So because I'm sending it to an application on the same computer, I don't need an IP address. I can just say localhost. And for port, we're going to say 8000. Now I want to double check this is the correct port. So if I go into project settings and scroll down, I don't have OSC installed, so I cannot do that. So how do we install OSC on this project? We're going to be using this plugin, wonderful plugin right here. Now, one thing to note is that this project needs to be a C++ project to use this plugin. Now, I've already created a project and I made it, as you might remember, a blueprint project. A very easy, simple way to convert your project from a blueprint project to a C++ project is to just add a new C++ empty class. And you will, need, you will need Visual Studio or Xcode install, and I'm just adding this empty class. Now, I don't need to do anything in C++. I don't need to write any code, and I can continue to use my blueprints in my project. I'm just converting this to a C++ class so that we can use the OSC plugin. So while this is compiling, I'm going to go ahead and download this plugin. And let's go ahead and extract that. Wonderful. And if I go ahead and find my project, and this was video and OSC, I need a plugins folder. So I'm going to right click and make a new folder called plugins. And I don't want this folder, I want the OSC folder. And the reason is, is because this is what contains the U plugin. That's the folder I want. So I'm gonna drag that over. Notice the plugins, and this is just opening Visual Studio because I started a C++ project. But note the plugins folder has a capital P. It's spelled correctly, this matters. So I'm gonna close this out. And I'm actually, for this next step, going to have to close my project as well. Oh, that's my old Python code. So if I go back and I right click on my Unreal project, there's this generate Visual Studio project files. And this is essentially rebuilding all of our C++ files so that we can compile this OSC plugin. Now, once we compile this, we won't have to do it again, but we do have to do it this first time. So 421 seems happiest with Visual Studio 2017 and not Visual Studio 2019. Okay, great. So 
If I go under games, I have my project right here. I have the plugins folder and there's my OSC. So this is the engine. This is the entire Unreal Engine right here, 421. But I only just need to rebuild my project. So I'm going to right click and select build. It's going to take a minute. And what we're looking for at the end is to say build succeeded. We have that then we can close out of this. We don't have to do anything else in Visual Studio and we are good to go. Okay, and there we go. Bill succeeded, all we need. We'll let this finish parsing now that that's done. So now I can close out of this and we can go ahead and open up our project in Unreal. And now the OSC plugin is compiled. It's already enabled in the project and we are good to go. So again, I was originally, I was checking the port number for our OSC protocol. So let me go back into, there we go, into my map. That's gonna drive me nuts. There we go. And if I go back into project settings, this time I will have OSC. And we can see that receive from is using port 8000. So if I go here and I'm gonna send a message, so that's the M key, and I'm going to say play. Great, so I have play and I'm sending this to localhost because I'm sending it to my computer on port 8000. So in my video wall, I'm going to add an OSC component. And if I select OSC receiver and right click, I can now have access to the events for OSC. So whenever I receive an OSC message, I'm going to be sending it to play. And I don't need this delay anymore. So I'm going to go ahead it's black because the scene has been opened, but I haven't started the player yet. So I'm going to go back into Max and hit play. And now my video is playing. We can also use different routes so we can have different messages um, control different things. So in Max, we have play. I can also set up pause. Again, for a message, you want to hit the M key. So now I have play and I have pause. To differentiate between the two of them, I have access to the message with the address. And so I'm going to say, if this is on the play route, very important that you spell this correctly, it's going to go to play and to handle uh, what would in traditional programming languages be an if statement, we're going to use a branch. So if it equals play, then we're going to play. And we also had a pause. So if the address is pause, then we will pause. And I need a branch. And to handle both of these branches, I'm going to use a sequence. Wonderful. So let's save, compile, and save. So I'm going to hit play. Let's back up a little bit here. So I'm going to go into my max patch. If I hit play, it's playing. <laughs> And it's running at a slower rate when I have Max in front because Unreal, by default, um, doesn't use as much po processing power as when it's the main application. So your frame rate will drop drastically if you have other applications open. So I'm going to hit pause, and it pauses. Play. And pause. Wonderful. 
Okay, so as we noticed, sometimes max also is not the best scenario because I can't have this window open while my frame rate is dropping. So I'm going to close out of max. And something else we can use is we can use our phone to control our blueprints. So I'm going to open up my phone for you guys. And I am using the Touch OSC app. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. And the first thing I need to do is I need to set my host and my port. So my port, as we can see, is already 8,000. Now to set up the host, I need to know the IP address of this computer. So if I go into command prompt and type in IP config, if you're on a Mac, you can just look this up in your network settings. And we're looking for the IPv4 address. So I'm going to grab that address and plug it into my phone. And it was already there. That's convenient. Okay, great. So now I'm done. So now I have all these buttons, I have these sliders. You can create your own layout, but this is a layout that they give to you by default. So I figure, you know, this can be my play and this can be my touch. Now I don't know exactly what kind of data these two buttons are sending. So I actually am going to go back into Max. Um, this is a really easy way to figure out what sort of address these events are coming in on. And then we can tailor them in our blueprint. So I'm going to go into Max, and I'm going to open a UDP receive, and we're receiving on port 8000. And whatever I receive, I'm just going to print. And Unreal is already bound to 8,000, so it's breaking. So we're gonna do 8,001, and then just shift that in our phone really quick, just for testing. Okay, so now if I hit one of the buttons, I can see that it's one slash toggle one, and we're not gonna worry. The one value is just letting us know that the button is turned on. If I hit it again, I would get a zero. We don't need to worry about that. Um, unless, yeah, we're not gonna worry about that today. The second button is one slash toggle two. So this button will be my play, and this button will be my pause. All right, so I'm gonna go back and switch this to 8,000. And I'm going to go into, so one toggle one and one toggle two. I'm actually going to close max again. And this was still running, which is why max threw that error because it was already bound on port 8000. And I'm going to switch this to one slash toggle one. And I'll switch this to one slash toggle two. Great, so I'm going to, so this can still be the main application and we can still see our phone right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play. I don't have any videos playing right now. If I hit the first button, it starts playing. I hit the second, it pauses. I can play, pause, play, pause. And now I can run my entire blueprint through my phone. So that's a quick tutorial on video textures, compiling the OSC plugin, and then using either Macs or your phone to run your blueprints. Hope you guys liked it.